So welcome everybody to this uh, research seminar at the Institute for Future Studies. It's lovely to see so many people present here in real life, but I'm also heard that there's a vast number of people online. I think over 130 people have registered for this seminar, so it's great. And uh, today we have uh, Jerzy Sanecki, who's going to talk about immigration and crime development at the national and municipal level, preliminary findings from the WHIS project. Uh, Jersey is a senior professor of criminology at uh, Stockholm University and, of course, uh, a very important researcher here at the Institute for Future Studies. Uh, he came to Sweden in 69 and got his PhD in sociology at Stockholm University and worked for a while at the Swedish National Council for Crime Prevention and then uh, took up the chair of criminology at Stockholm University in 93 and has written extensively in criminology. Uh, I will just mention a few here. This will be a book in Swedish, but uh, it's a very good book. Uh, Introduction to Criminology, but in Swedish. One, I think there's now a second book. That just yeah, two volumes. Two volumes by now. Uh, and uh, also a recent uh, publication, Women in Violent Extremism in Sweden, together with Herman Mandani, Amir Ustami, and Tina Scanius, and Christopher Edling here at the Institute. And he's uh, lead, currently leading a longitudinal research project entitled the Stockholm Life Course Project, Life Course and Crime in the Swedish Welfare State through half a century. He's also doing research on the use of network theory and uh, methodology in, uh, in uh, criminology, uh, actually involving uh, also people from physics, and that's what he's doing here at the Institute. Uh, so, uh, Jerzy, welcome up. The Thank floor you. is yours. <coughs> Thank you very much, Gustav, for this introduction and thank you for inviting me here. What I'm going to do this afternoon is to talk about work in progress. This is extremely important to, to, to tell everyone that this is something we are doing. We are in the beginning of it, you could say. We have still two and a half years of the project. I'm looking from time to time to Sofia uh, Wickman, who is the leading leader of the project. Uh, so if I'm saying something wrong, she will immediately correct me. Uh, the whole idea of this is related to some empirical findings. So what we started with war was uh, empirical findings. And then we started to try to make sort of theory of it. And again, this is very much to the left. So what I'm going to do here is to tell you about some very preliminary findings. Let me start with something which is very well known. You could say that if there is an area which is very carefully investigated in Sweden and other Scandinavian countries is a question of so-called over-representation of immigrants among people registered for crimes. Recently, uh, we had the publication from Swedish National Council for Crime Prevention. It was quite a lot publicity about it, but this is one of very many, maybe over 30 publications on the same team about question if immigrants are overrepresented in crime or not. And all these studies are showing that immigrants are overrepresented. What I'm showing here on the table is the results of uh, studies um, um, which are possible to compare because they defining different aspects in the same way. There are studies uh, done by Swedish National Council for Crime Prevention, BRO, three of them, and then you have a studies, study done by Patrick Engelau the private, uh, private uh, finance study. So what are all these studies showing? From 
middle of 70s when the first study of that kind was committed. Well, they are all showing that we have substantial overrepresentation of people, um, uh, foreigners, uh, immigrants, people for born abroad, uh, among people who are suspected or uh, sentenced for crime. So if you look, for instance, at daily violence, we have an overrepresentation uh, around four, pretty constant, I would say. And this is since 85 here, we can see that, which means that if you, um, if you count Swedes as one, you have a four time overrepresentation of people born abroad ab among people who are suspected or sentenced for. For, for murder, uh, homo other kinds of homicides, etc., etc., and then you can see at the table also other kinds of crime. Uh, rape is among the crimes where overrepresentation is as highest. But in general, we are talking about two until two and a half times overrepresentation. Uh, I'm not going to talk that much about it today, but in part of our study, we, are look, we, are, we look on the, at the second generation of immigrants. I mean, people born, born in Sweden by, by, by immigrant people. It shows, namely, that this overrepresentation is growing. Uh, so we have a pretty constant uh, number of uh, people born abroad who are, uh, who are in the criminal statistics. And if you look at the children to these people, this overrepresentation is higher and higher. And maybe we should see it as the very bad sign that, that it's more than 10 times overrepresentation uh, in, uh, among people uh, suspected for. Uh, for, for uh, deadly violence uh, among, the, among uh, young people who are born in Sweden of, with both foreign-born parents. Okay, so this is a kind of start, starting point. What is a starting point for this study? This is this empirical finding. If you look at the uh, proportion of immigrants in Sweden, as you very well know, know, this proportion is rapidly growing. Uh, in the 70s, uh, the number of uh, the, 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 the percentage of people born abroad, like myself, was around 7%. Percent. It's now approaching 20% of Swedish population. So, if you have the situation when you have uh, overrepresentation by four, among people who are uh, suspected or sentenced for deadly violence. And you have a rapid growth of the immigrants. You should expect that you will also have very rapid growth of the, of the number of homicides. It's pretty obvious. It's kind of logic. But it happens not to be so. If you see at this, this uh, red or whatever orange uh, uh, curve, we have an increase uh, between uh, 75 or, or uh, well, beginning of 90s. And we have a very long and substantial decrease of number of homicides in Sweden, counted, of course, per 1 million inhabitants. Then we have this grow last, last decade, and this, as you very well understand, is, is uh, linked link to, 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 to the grow of, the, of the, 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 this gang violence, I mean, shooting among the criminals. So something is not exactly as we would like expect. As, as a scientist, you, of course, have some kind of obligation to look at it. Let me, start, so let me start with to show you how the curve of the number of homicide should be expected to look like if you count it with this growth of the immigrants and you add the, 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 the over, over risk for the immigrants. So it's, it's going in a pretty different way. 
the, the expected numbers are very different to, 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 to the, 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 the reality. So something happens here. Uh, the measure of deadly violence is one of the best measures of criminology in criminology you can find. In general, it's very complicated to measure number of crimes. I mean, simple explanation is that people don't want you to don't want to tell, tell you when you, they commit crime, and they try to hide it in different ways. So it's kind of problem to find the, the real number. But but according to 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 to, to deadly violence, we have two. Totally different sources. Data is gathering totally different ways. One is medical statistics. The other is uh, the reported crimes, which are, which are computed by the Swedish National Council for Crime Prevention, and they are in very good agreement. So having this kind of two different sources, you can assume that these numbers are pretty correct. If you look at the other. Uh, indicators of crime development. It's not that easy. Uh, but we could anyhow look at them. You have uh, the same crimes here I was showing you uh, in the table a uh, uh, few minutes ago. And you see that even if you compare the development of uh, uh, number of immigrants in Sweden and development of these different kinds of crime, you can't see very strong correlation. We can discuss uh, the details here, uh, rapes on others, they, they are pretty complicated stuff. But let me just, just uh, take as an example thefts. Thefts per hundred, per hundred inhabitants. This is a, the, the, the blue, light blue line here. So what happens? Uh, Immigra immigration is growing and thefts are, are growing until sometime uh, 1985 or something. And then immigrants, immigration is continuing to grow and the number of thefts, according to the police reports, is substantially decreasing. And as you see before at the, my first tab table, uh, the, 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 the immigrants are, are overrepresented by two and a half times or something. In theft. So again, exactly like uh, in the question of deadly violence, there is no correlation between thefts and emigration, even if you should expect this kind of correlation. So let us try some kind of, I don't know, you could say the theoretical approach. I'm not going to be very detailed in that kind, but we have and in discussion in the, the science, scientific discourse, we have this discussion on the atomistic fallacy and the ecologic, ecological fallacy. And the, the atomistic fallacy is more or less, less that, <laughs> that, that we sh you shouldn't draw conclusion at the macro level from the situation at the micro level. So my curve there, when I was counting expect, expected number of murder, murders, this is, what, this is what you could say, the, the atomistic fallacy. So uh, it's not necessarily the case, simply. So there is a theoretical possibility that we have a different development of the micro level and the, and the, and the, and the micro level, uh, uh, micro level and the, 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 the aggregated level. And this is what this study is going on. We are working with two studies. We have one publication coming on pretty soon, even if, as you know, if you submit things to the, to the, pay, to the, to the, to the, to the um, different places, it's not always that you get answer immediately, but pretty soon. The other is, it will take time. Uh, more before the empirical findings. Uh, the, the idea that immigration is not uh, increasing level of crime in, the, in, in different countries is not new, and it's not in Swedish, and you have a number of, uh, of, of research both old uh, American uh, investigations and the new research, mostly in the United States and also in other countries, where it's uh, 
obviously not so that if immigration is growing, the, 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 the number or the level of crime is increasing. In the United States, in the matter of fact, there is the opposite discussion. Uh, the, the, there is discussion that uh, maybe uh, the, the immigration is causing decrease of crime. One of uh, scientists, uh, Robert Sampson, uh, for instance, is claiming that uh, maybe one of the explanations to so the, this famous crime, crime drop in the United States is the fact of substantial influx of immigrants. So uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is it's, it's not the very original ide idea. This is only original for Swedish circumstances because in Sweden we were very much concentrated to look at the overrepresentation of immigrants among criminals, but we do not, uh, we are not doing very many studies of the, the other aspects of these problems. So let me uh, show you the, the first study, very short, just the, 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 the one glimpse of this. Uh, what we are doing here is to look at the 20 municipalities with largest increase in reported violent crimes. And violent crimes are defined here as the crimes against Chapter 3 of Swedish Penal Code. Brotwood uh, Livo crimes against life and health. You could add other kind of uh, violent crimes too to this, but we didn't do that. So we are looking at these 20 municipalities with, high, with, with most rapid development of, of violent crimes, and we are looking at 20 municipalities without any increase in violent crimes. And this data is from 1997. Uh, let me say that if you do this kind of studies, you are very much dependent on, on what kind of, of registers you have. So we are taking whatever we got, as long as possible, of course. Uh, this is my colleague, Amber Buckley, who did this diagram. Uh, I'm very grateful to her for that, even if I change it partly. <laughs> what you see here is uh, development of these two kinds of municipalities according to number of registered crimes, I mean violent crimes. And the, the yellow lines are, are representing, um, well, uh, development of reported violent crimes. And uh, the yellow with the red dots is uh, municipalities with substantial increase. And yellow without red dots is the others. As you see, it's, it's a kind of variation, but the one is ending with the much higher number of, of, of registered crimes and the other is ending with, the, with the, 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 some lower number. In general, most municipalities had decrease, I'm sorry, increase during this time. Uh, and, and then we are looking at emigration and we're looking in two different way, uh, ways. The, the, the blue lines are showing the, the, the excess of emigrants. I mean, how many more emigrants there is in the municipality every year. And the, the, the green one is showing the development of people born abroad in this kind of municipalities. And, and the, the result is pre pretty simple. You can't see any correlation between development of immigrants and development of violent crimes, since in some municipalities you have increase and the other municipalities you do not have increase. And if you look at the immigration, they are more or less identical. The only possible effect you can observe, you will come back to this question, in, in the moment is that 2016, one year after the refugee wave, you can see increase in both uh, municipalities with high number of, of, of uh, the, the high increase and, and without increase. But this is just for the, for the momental, this one year, and, and, and then everything disappears. It's going back to, the, to, the, to the, the normal development. So maybe 
something happens. I mean, you see that that there is a increase, uh, the, the peak in excess, and even peaks in in the crime. Maybe the year after, but otherwise nothing. So, if you compare those these two kinds of municipalities with each other, what kind of differences you can find? You can't obviously find the differences in the relation to the immigration. So what is there? Many different fascinating things. So if you look at the, at the, 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 the municipalities with the, with the substantial growth of the violent crimes, you can see they are the smaller and they are, there is no population growth in these municipalities. They are small and not developing. Then the, the, the average income is lower and differences in the incomes are growing. The registered unemployment is higher. Uh, number or, or percentage of people who have different kinds of benefits is higher. The pro percentage I'm sorry, of, of people with the higher education is lower. The proportion of dissatisfied people, and there I'm doing a pretty violent operation here, I'm saying that people who are voting for Swedish Democrats are unsatisfied. I think it's not a totally crazy solution, a, a, a assumption, but you can, of course, discuss. But the number of people who are voting for, for Swedish Democrats are higher in the municipalities with more growth, of, uh, or with growth with the, with the violence. Uh, people at the sick leaves are more at the sick leaves in this kind of municipalities. The suicide rate is higher in this municipality, surprising enough, because uh, you wouldn't really expect this. this oh, and uh, which is important, we have this system of, of uh, compulsory transfer. I mean, uh, state is paying to the municipality, to poor municipalities, to compensate them for, for low taxations. Uh, this, uh, this is much higher and in these municipalities with growing uh, violence and it's increasing during the period. period. So, uh, uh, well, uh, this is not causal state, causal statement, of course, not yet anyhow, but you could say pretty obviously that what we have to do here with is that immigration since not play very much in, this, uh, in, in the growth of violence, but very many other traditional criminological variables are obviously related to this. Okay? Oh, I have to hurry. Second study. The second study is pretty similar to the, the first study, but this time we are looking at the 20 municipalities with highest, highest uh, immigration and 20 municipalities with lowest immigration. And this data is from 2000, to year 2000 to 2020, so it's 20 years. And now we will try to look at this famous refugee wave too. I mean, we got uh, uh, 160,000 people uh, coming to Sweden year 2015. And again, if you count that immigrants have a higher, a higher crime rate, it should be, you should expect some kind of effect on the, on, on the, the crime levels and other variables. So let us start to, 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 to start with the with, with proportion of immigrants in these two kinds of municipalities, low immigration, high immigration, and compared with, with the old, the can, old country. And you can, as you can see, uh, immigrants are coming mainly to municipalities where there already are many immigrants. Uh, so uh, there were 20 percent foreign-born people in this country in 2000, and then uh, it's uh, 35 or what, something like that. I think I can see uh, 33. I'm sorry, uh, year 2020. Uh, so the increase of uh, uh, what do you call it? 13 percentage. 
not points. What what's, what do you call it? Percentage points? I think it's something else in English. Ah, well, thank you. Uh, okay. Sometimes, sometimes things are more simple than, than, you, than you think they are. <laughs> and then you see at the low immigration municipalities, this immigration have, uh, this <laughs> municipalities have 7% uh, when it starts and uh, it grows to, to 10%. So, so, so the, 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 the increase of immigrants in this, this, uh, this municipality is 3% point. So, so you see that there is it's a huge difference how the immigrants are distributed in this country. It's extremely important. So again, what's the difference between municipalities with high and low immigration? They are differently distributed. This is, by the way, my colleagues uh, uh, Lars Westfeld, so, uh, who helped me with this uh, presentation. Uh, what, as you see, uh, immigrants are concentrated to municipalities around Stockholm. Uh, this is a development of violent crimes, theft, and then sexual offenses and drug offenses. Uh, drug offenses and sexual offenses are in different ways pretty, pretty complicated. Uh, but uh, I'm showing them because otherwise someone would say you are hiding something here. But if you look at the violence and then you look at the thefts, you see uh, different levels with mi for municipalities with high uh, a number of, 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 of immigrants and um, there is much lower in low numbers of immigrants and the, 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 the average for the, the, the cold country is in the middle. But if you look at the development and if you look at what happened 2015, you can see at the violence pretty clearly nothing happens. 1,600 more than that people, mostly Muslims, mostly male, mostly young, are coming to this country and you can't see any effects on violent crimes or not thefts. The trend is continuing. The one trend is, is growing and then, then stabilization, the other trend is, is decreasing. Much more complicated with sexual crimes. Probably because the the, they are too few and it will be quite a quite lot of ram random, uh, random uh, changes. <laughs> For some reason, so are these crimes really increasing year after the, 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 this is, uh, wave is coming. But I can't, it could be possible to, to explain, but how to explain the decrease <laughs> is pretty complicated. And if you look at the, the drug offenses, here we have a much more complicated situation. I mean, the other kind of crimes he reported here is reported by the victims mostly. Uh, when it comes to, 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 to drug offenses, it's related to the activity in the police authorities mo mostly. So what happened here after 2015, if, um, very hard to say when it's growing and decreasing and increasing and so on. Uh, it, it should be investigated, investigated much closer. Uh, so I don't have any very good explanation to it. But, but the, the, the main point is nothing happens with violence, nothing happened with thefts. Okay, what happens in the, the, the general situation? I mean, to start with, uh, municipalities with many immigrants are generally much bigger than municipalities with low number immigrants. And the, the, the average, it's immediate as you see here. The population density in, this, in the municipalities with many immigrants and uh, substantial growth of immigrants it den population density is much higher, it's substantially higher. We are placing immigrants with uh, bigger municipalities with, and we are placing them in the, 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 the areas with high, high density. Well, which is not extremely surprising. But again, if you look at what happened after 2015, you could see in both cases, that the trends is just continuing. Nothing happens. 
this is a proportion of person with uh, with at least three years uh, past post secondary education uh, it's it's it a bit different this picture because, uh, well, it's still lowest among the the, the populated community uh, municipalities with men immigrants, uh, men. But uh, th the highest is in average for the country. It depends on that the average in the country. We have these big cities and university cities. So, yeah. Well, professors are in Stockholm. Uh, uh this is subsidy, I was talking about it before. And this is a very substantial different difference. I mean, uh, the municipalities with, with high number of immigrants are getting much more from the state as the compensation than other municipalities. So what happens here? Well, it's pretty simple. They are poor communities. And they are they were <laughs> poor before immigrants came, the wave came, and they are still poor. But even, they are even poorer, obviously. But again, if you look at the trend, very little happens. Sorry, I say. Uh, Don't say that I I, I, I have mistake, uh, mistaken mistaken again. Oh, may, may I speak to you? What is the vertical bars about? Oh, uh, this is uh, this uh, it, it's two thousand. Uh, so it's just where, where our counting is starting, uh -huh. and the red is uh, the immigration vo uh, or okay. the, the refugee vo uh, wave. Nice. I should tell you this long before that, <laughs> but it's still this red. Red is the the the, the, uh, the 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 wave. Now we are coming to something very special, and I'm there are not that many curves more. So just I'm I'm soon finished. Uh, this is a labor force participation. So, Verwerfs, uh, Frequenz, here the Slovakian uh, Svenska. What happens here is again uh, the same as I was showing you all the time. Uh, people are, ch are more working much more in municipalities with low emigration and less in municipalities with high immigration. And again, the, the average is in the middle. But uh, again, if you look at the trend, I mean, in all three groups of municipalities, we have substantial increase of number of people in work. Uh, so if you are using this as, well, it's, it's improvement of the labor of the labor market. It can't be. Uh, it's the only explanation for it. But again, we ha we are getting hundred sixty thousand people here now. Uh, you have to remember that that if if it if it concerns crime, the effect of immigration will be immediate. I mean, people are there in the municipalities. If you look at the at this kind of variables, the the, the effect will be much slower because uh, the, the, there is a quite a long period before they are getting to the ordinary statistics. I mean, they are in the camps. The things happen. They get or not do, do not get the permit to stay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So of course you can expect this kind of sudden sudden changes, but nothing changes, and. And this is a funny thing. If you look at 2008 and 9, things, things happen. And what happened 2008 and 9? Yes, we had the crisis uh, in the finances. Uh, some uh, American banks went down. So look at it because this is this is I mean this is totally surprise for me too. That's why I'm I'm so amused about it. When American banks are collapsing, we have an effect on the on the the, 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 the number of people in, in work in Sweden. When one hundred and sixty thousand immigrants are coming, nothing happens. Why? I don't know. Okay. Last, uh, last uh, uh, figure. Uh, 
This is more or less the same, but, 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 but opposite, sort of. This is number of people who are not, a uh, uh, proportion, of course, uh, people who are not work, uh, who are uh, not working and not studying. So they are sort of outside the society. This is, uh, this is people who are who are uh, far from the from the from the uh, well, the social control in our society. You could say uh, the blue one is, uh, as you see, the. The, the Swedish-born people in the low emigration municipalities. Uh, green are uh, Swedish-born people with the high emigration society communities, and we have uh, or municipalities, and we, then we have two two, two groups uh, uh, of of people born abroad, and and then you, you have uh, um, foreign-born people in. Uh, high, high emigration uh, municipalities and foreign born people with low emigration municipalities. Again, to some extent, this is exactly what we expect. The number of people who are outside the lab labor market and the, the schools is, of course, uh, substantially higher among immigrants. It's higher among immigrants who are living in uh, segregated areas. Not surprising at all either. But again, to start with, the numbers of this kind of people is shrinking. The, if few, there are fewer and fewer people who are outside the labor market and the, 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 the other kind of activities. And this is also related to immigrants. So, so if you wish, you could uh, measure this or, or count this as the measure of, of integration. Because there is no better, according to me, measure of integration than to counting if people are in the labor market or not. Well, this, uh, more and more of immigrants are working. So, so this is not the opposite. I mean, this is <laughs> I, I mean, integration works. I will come back to uh, that, that it's not working for, over, uh, for everyone, but it, it, it's obviously it's, it's improving. And then you can also see that it's much, much more dangerous for people, uh, for ho foreigners, for people born abroad, to live in the uh, communities when with many immigrants uh, than for Swedes, because the, 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 the gap is bigger uh, in the upper part of this, this uh, graph. Uh, but it's not very good for Swedes either, because they will be, th the more Swedes are obviously obviously out of the labor market there. Then you see the, the, the crisis, the, the finance, finance crisis. You have uh, again turbulence on the curve again here too. And again, it's very hard to see any effects of the immigration waves. So it's very hard to see that the wave that is the big wave of immigrants to Sweden uh, in 2015 have any effects of the crime or, or very small effects of the crime. I wouldn't, may maybe these are exaggerations, so say never, no effects, but small effects, and even on what you could call criminogenic factors. To some conclusion, well, <laughs> the first one. I was too eager to uh, say it before, but as you see, no effects, no very easy spotted, I would say, effects of the of the, the, the this refugee wave. Uh, and not nor at the at the variables who are producing crime or we believe produce the crime. And the explanation to micro, mi micro, uh, micro uh, and, and aggregate level, well, uh, what must happen? Well, when, when we have an influx of, of immigrants here and crime is not raising, for instance, if you look at the, 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 the deadly violence, it can't mean anything else that the proportion of immigrants among people who are committing crimes is increasing and proportion of Swedish born is decreasing. Uh, so 
we could call it, if you wish, ethnization of underclass. So, so, and, and, and this is obvious. I mean, there are not other kind of explanations. Uh, what's less obvious is if, the, if these two variables are related to each other. Because you could, of course, say that, you look, we have mm, the, 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 the crime among Swedes are decreasing and the crime among um, immigrants is increasing because they are, uh, they are more and more immigrants. If you just send away all immigrants, we will have, we will have the extremely deep decrease of criminality in the country. This is one hypothesis. The other hypothesis is, of course, that these two, these two phenomena are related to each other. And, and, and it would be like that, that what happens when we are getting many people with bad education, without uh, knowledge of the languages, without compacts, without money, that these people will land sort of on the bottom of the society. And what happens with people who are, who are occupying the position in the bottom of society before? For instance, in big cities, people who, live, who, who lived in the, 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 the million program areas before er, many immigrants came, people who had very low incomes or, or were without work before, people pretty often in big cities coming from, uh, fr from the, 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 the countryside, in the country, moving to Stockholm, for instance. Well, it could be that what happens to these people, that they will be lifted. I, I used to say that, let us say that, this, that, that, uh, that these people were working at the, <laughs> the kind of uh, workers on some kind of lager or something. Uh, and then the new people got coming and taking their position and they will be some higher in the hierarchy. They will be leading <laughs> people at this, at this level. They will move from the areas, uh, with, with the, the, the West areas, I mean the, the, the socially, uh, socially disadvantaged areas, they will get some better uh, jobs, better wages, uh, better apartment and so on. And if you look at the criminological theories, you could maybe suspect that they will be more controlled. So the crime among these people will decrease, at the same time we are getting the new underclass. This is, of course, we can't prove with this kind of studies. But this is a hypothesis which should be, it must be investigated according to the data I was presenting. Okay, last thing. Uh, what about the shootings? I mean, we can't have this criminological seminar without talking about the, the shootings in the, in the, the, the this, this disadvantaged areas. Uh, 45 people, I, if 48 or something last year, died because of shootings. It's, it's serious. Well, this positing de positive development where we have more and more participation in the uh, working force, we have more and more people who are studying, people are getting better education and so on, also among the immigrants. is of course not applicable for all immigrant population and maybe even less applicable for the children to immigrants, something we, are, we, we have to investigate much more. Uh, so at the same time, when we have the, the improve in general improvement in the country, we have a substantial uh, increase of problems in very small portion of the society. The people who are so long outside the, the, the our society that they are uh, belonging to some kind of very, very particular culture of violence. Young people who, uh, who are ready to kill and ready to die for more or less nothing. Because they are, they are, I mean, the conflicts behind the, the shootings are, are, are grotesque, I would say. Uh, so, so, so <laughs> even if th there is a general improvement, is obvious substantial uh, increase of problems in, in this small group of people. 
this is what our data is showing. This is also other data is showing it very, very clearly. We have a study among others of uh, Beckman, Estrada, and Nilsson, and uh, one person I should remember. Mm, okay, I'm sorry, Frederick uh, Silverson. Silverson. I'm sorry. I, I should remember Frederick, uh, which is showing uh, at totally different data, uh, just about the same the same kind of development. So, uh, so this is not the statement of we are not having problems. This is a statement about that we maybe have more complicated problems than the general discourse is showing. So I would like at the end warn for the surface people who are surfing on a migration wave. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jesse. Uh, a very interesting talk, and I'm sure it's going to raise a lot of questions. Since we are having a hybrid seminar, there will be different rules. Uh, the people here uh, uh, in, at the Institute, you just need to put up your hand and uh, Julia will take down, keep it up until Julia take down, uh, uh, take down your name. Now, for you who are online, um, we will use the chat function to run the question and answer period. So if you wish to ask a question, you should write that in the chat. And since we are a mix of research from different fields, and we would like to mix uh, qu question from different fields, we ask you to tell us your area of study. Uh, and uh, so you write your name and area of study, for example, uh, Joe Philosophy. Uh, and um, you can also, we also do follow-up questions. So then you just write follow-up to the person who asked the question, like follow-up Gustav. Uh, and for you here, you just put up a finger instead of a hand if you have follow-up <laughs> questions. It's getting complicated with two audiences. Anyway, uh, for you online, uh, uh, when it's your turn to ask a question, I will call upon you and then I will put you, so say, in the spotlight so your video sound becomes available. Remember also to put it on yourself. Now, let's see here. Jeffrey okay, so we start directly with a question uh, from Jeffrey Mitchell. We're putting you on here. There you go. So you should be possible for you to ask your question. If my memory serves from the Brule report, the overrepresentation of violent crime was particularly high amongst the children of immigrants, uh, meaning that the correlation between contemporary violent crimes should be with the immigration wave that occurred between 15 and 25 years ago, because that would mean that the folks are within like this crime propensity age between 15 and 25 years old. So I'm wondering if any of your analyses have uh, lagged this correlation to check for it. OK. Uh, to start with, this is a very good question. And uh, I should uh, tell about it before <laughs> you ask, but I'm very grateful to you are asking. Uh, well, obviously, if you look at the situation uh, when the children of immigrants were growing, I mean the shooters who are today in 20, 20 or something. The situation of, of, uh, of, of the, the integration was much worse. Uh, so you, you should kind of expect that it was co it's causing problem. If your parents are out the well labor market, if they are not adjusted to the society, if they don't learn the language, etc., etc., you are at the risk. In addition, if you are not uh, managing the school, etc., etc., your risks are substantially growing. So you have a point here, obviously. And uh, in addition, you have to say that situation should be better today. But it's not good. <laughs> uh, we will, in this study, look much more about children of immigrants. Let me add that the previous studies of overrepresentation, which were also looking at the children of immigrants, didn't find this kind of substantial increase of risk for the second generation. So this is more or less pretty, pretty new knowledge for Sweden. Uh, which was also, also, by the way, always surprising 
many people from other countries because in traditional immigrant countries, uh, the second generation have much more problems than the first generation. I mean, if you look at the United States, first generation has, has lower numbers of, of, uh, of offenses uh, compared to the natives and the second generation have substantially higher. Uh, so what you are saying to us here that, I mean, beside the explanation I already give, uh, thank you, Jeffrey, we will look at it much closer. Satisfy with that, Jeffrey? Yes, thank you very much. Very good. Yes, so then uh, we have a uh, second question from online. Bo Malmberg, this is your turn. We're putting you on the spotlight here. Okay, yep. my own, yes. Thank you for the interesting presentation. Um, and also for the geographical perspective. Um, <laughs> One comment on, on the geographical side is that uh, yeah, I was interested in, in those municipalities that had a, had, a, had a large increase in, in crime. Because what we have seen when we do recent kind of small area analysis of, 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 uh, of spatial polarization is that there has been a, an increase since 2010 or 2007 of the uh, areas with concentrated poverty also in, in in quite small municipalities, um, so that I think would be uh, that would be. I will look into this is to see if that um, the, the municipalities that the, the characteristics you gave of the, of the municipalities with high increases, mm -hmm. there could be an overlap, possibly an overlap with the, with these areas where you had this in, the, this um, new uh, effect of concentrated poverty areas. Often uh, these are areas in small municipalities with with multifamily rental housing very high rates of, of social assistance, very high poverty rates, which is kind of new, which we haven't seen, I think, before in, in the, the, these small areas, these small municipalities. So, so that I think that could be worth looking into. But I also had the comment then on, on, um, on, on this uh, the very high rates of over-representation in the second generation. Uh, what has, if you look at the spatial development, what we know from, from, from the US, is that if there is something that, that, that is kind of increases the risk of, of, of high crime levels, uh, it's, it's kind of spatially concentrated poverty. Mm. Uh, and if you look at Swedish development from 1990 to, to 2016, which is what we've seen then, we have, have, have had very high increases in spatially concentrated poverty. And also I have the link is, is in, in, the, in the chat. Uh, you can show that this that, that this increase is, there is in fact in a link between uh, concentration of, of higher proportions of migrants in the neighborhood and increasing poverty rates, which is essentially kind of it's not white flight but kind of rich flight. Mm -hmm. The higher proportion of migrants in a, in a, in a local area, the stronger is the tendency for for kind of middle income people to move out and you get a concentration of the get a sorting that, that the, the people that stay in this area are to a large extent uh, affected by, by high poverty mm -hmm. uh, and you also then can see that when you look at this second it's correct with the second generation migrants that many of them in fact they, they are not kind of stuck in these neighborhoods but there is one group and there is a very kind of high selectivity among second generation immigrants um, uh, in this, in this, in the out movement from these high poverty areas, that it is it's especially migrants with with the kind of poor parents uh, and and uh, unemployed parents and so on to get stuck in this area. So, so mm, in fact, mm. the, the sorting that you get is that the more and more of of the people that are in this these poor areas are kind of second generation migrants that have not really done that good in in, in life. Mm. Uh, but then, then the second is then it's the macro pattern also. But can you really then, uh, if if you have this development, you would expect that where the crime rates, if you think that this could kind of increase the crime rates, this would have happened in, in the high poverty areas. Mm -hmm. And also we know that that crime reporting in this, those areas is very low. So so it, it could a kind of simple explanation for this mismatch between my micro and macro could be that. There has been an increase in crime in these areas, but it's simply not reported. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, thank you, Bo. I, I understand that we have to talk to more to you <laughs> because we are kind of partly coming in in your area and uh, I will be gra very grateful. It, I'm very grateful for your comments. Well, we hope to see Bo here at the Institute, so maybe you can... Yes, yeah, well, here. we are working on the same project, so it will be that complicated. <laughs> but mm -hmm. but uh, um, let, me, let me say also... Remember that I'm back. <laughs> yes. So let me say also another thing, because it, you are pointing something which I was, uh, or you were talking very much about, namely this strange development of, as you're saying, small uh, communities without any, uh, well, the, 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 the communities who are not sort of following the, the development of the rest of the society. I mean, the normal picture, the normal criminological picture you would expect is that crime would be pretty low in these municipalities. I mean, wall, low population density, uh, no very much conflicts. Well, it's not going that well for people, but still. And I think so was also the situation in uh, year 2000, when the, the numbers of, of reported crimes in these municipalities were substantially lower. So when I was looking at these municipalities and compared to the rest of the country, I thought this is a kind of regression to the mean. <laughs> they, they, they had a very low numbers and now they are approaching to the to the, the mean for the country. The problem is they they approach the mean and they pass the mean and continue to grow in the crime, which is extremely important uh, to 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 try to explain. And I think you are uh, well. Your comments were very help helpful to to explain that. Uh, then, according to reporting, this is of course something we have also to look at. Uh, I'm convinced that there are low repo lower reporting in this this municipalities but i have i, I don't believe that it explain more than very small proportion as this of this the differences we are looking at but this is this is question to look at after this very sophisticated question from bo uh, i'm going to ask a much more simple question uh, thank you very kind of clarificatory question when you talk about crime levels and that they are not affected by this refugee race. Are you talking about the absolute level or the per capita levels? I'm talking about the, the number of crimes per 100,000 inhabitants, yes, 100 per inhabitants, 1 million inhabitants, yeah. depending on what kind of crimes yeah, we are so talking so about. So, so, so to, to, to push the, the, the curves mm -hmm. at, uh, at the you same to, uh, so page, you have to, to, to use different measures, but all measures are relative. Yeah, are relative. relative. Exactly. So that, that's just what I want to know. Then uh, the next question is from uh, Victor. We're going to put you in the spotlight. Thank you very much for holding this seminar. Uh, as a practitioner, I work as a uh, coordinator, security coordinator for Huddinge County uh, crime prevention on my table. I really, really appreciate this report, and, and uh, you did a great job. So thank you for holding this together. I had simply two questions here. The one is a more uh, general question and the second one is a more uh, what I think according to me and our own organization a bit more complex. Uh, so the first one is um, for us that uh, do not know uh, and are not uh, well read into the methodological um, details in the Brua uh, report. What would you say are the main method, method uh, differences between this one and the Brua report. So that's one thought, one question that I have. And the second one that I have is pretty much to do with the Sandberg and Saftal and mm -hmm. the Medboya Löfven, pretty mm -hmm. much all the um, body uh, treaties between the um, police institution and every single uh, or different region, uh, municipal kommuner, uh, I want to say, uh, municipal organizations would be in English. In those treaties, we, uh, we regulate that the police should focus on certain types of crimes to the expense of others. And in reality, that really uh, affects where the police is looking with the flashlight in certain areas in our municipality. So the end result is that they will look a lot with their flashlight in, in some areas. It will be very often within, in, in areas with a lot of immigration. Uh, 
mm-hmm. whilst other areas with no immigration will be left out. So I'd like to hear about uh, your thoughts uh, regarding this one. So again, thank you very much, and thanks for taking the time to address my question. Thank you, Victor. Uh, there were two very good and very important questions. The question is only if it's time enough to answer them. <laughs> so I'm trying with the easiest one, which is the first one, of course, methodological differences. The main methodological differences, the f- difference here is that Bro is looking at the individual level. They are counting people sort of who are suspected of crimes. And in the meantime, you are looking at the aggregate level, which means we are looking at the whole country and we are looking at the municipalities. And the, the methodological point I was trying to do, which is pretty complicated because I'm, to be frank with you, I don't understand it really myself, but there are differences between the, the, the aggregate level and the, the, the individual level. The, the point is that, that things which happen at the municipality level or at the the country level and things which are happening with the the individuals are not exactly the same and not not under the same kind of systematical laws. So this is a difference. Uh, If you ask me about uh, about the the Bro report uh, in general and in relation to the methodological aspects there, I was together with two other colleagues, uh, Martin Helsty and and Richard Schulkin. Uh, I was working with the pretty similar individual approach a few years ago. It's published in 2013 in British Journal of Criminology, uh, where we were also trying to look at the the, 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 the effects of socio-economic variables. The difference between what we did and what Bro is doing, that, that when Bro is took looking about the eff- uh, looking at the effect of socio-economic variables, uh, kind income or or, or 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 also the education, they are looking at the people they are investigating, which means that criminals, uh, people who are committing crime, have mostly not higher education and they are mostly very low incomes. So if you control for these two variables at this level, you won't get any effects. It's part definition. So uh, that this, this leveling is already done by the circumstances that these people are committing crime. What we did, and uh, as you understand, I think it's much wiser, uh, that we look at the parents, social ec- socioeconomical background and uh, also the the, 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 um, uh, the the living circumstances uh, at the p- with the parents of the people we looked at so in our study when we take took uh, control of the social economical variables and uh, segregation we found that 70 percent of difference between between uh, immigrants and uh, Swedish born people could be controlled by social economical variables and and segregation which is bro- not doing uh, which is okay but it will <laughs> will show different kind of results and so so when we are stressing here social economical variables uh, it's because we know from other kind of studies that this kind of variable is important and the bro measures, it's not relevant in these circumstances. It was uh, th- the short answer to the, your first question. Uh, according to uh, this uh, municipality, the, the, the decision that the municipality will t- we have the responsibility for crime prevention work and the, the cooperation between municipalities and the police, uh, I'm ge- in general supporting these ideas but I am very critical to way it's, it, it's done, particularly because there are hardly any evaluations of effects of this work. So it's, it's a lot of things done. Probably or hopefully many of them are okay. But since we don't know if it works it not, I, or not, it's, it, it's, it's very hard to learn from it. So my criticism in general here is mostly against the police authorities, but also against the the municipalities that they are not 
sufficiently knowledge oriented and they are not evaluating what they are doing, which means that we can't learn about it. If you're interested in more of this discussion, I published a report with ESSO, Expert Group and for Study of Offently Economy 2019, where I'm discussing it in much more details. Uh, we, we have Ori Stefansson, who we are now putting here on the spotlight. Ori? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. We don't see you, so put on the camera, please. You don't see me. Uh, okay, sorry, then I have to change something in the system preferences. No, okay, okay. So no, 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 don't do that. Uh, we will okay. have to do without seeing you. All right, nice to see you, in any case. <laughs> uh, Thanks for a very interesting talk. I just want to ask you, and maybe this is a hard question to answer, but so towards the end, you mentioned two potential hypotheses or explanations uh, for the sort of disc discrepancy between the aggregate statistics on the one hand and on the other hand, the uh, sort of statistics about differences in crime between Swedes and non-Swedes. Mm. And one of the explanations was something like, well, Perhaps with this counterfactual idea that if it hadn't been for the wave of immigration, we would have seen more drastic reduction in crime. And the other one was this more sort of structural explanation, I guess, that, mm. you know, because of you know, how, how the, you know, some people were bumped up in the social chain, so, so to speak, who, so to speak, who, that, and therefore committed fewer crimes. I was just wondering, uh, so you mentioned these as two potential hypotheses, and I wonder, is there any, uh, I mean, how can you, is there any data, p p possible data or ex natural or non-natural experiments that can help us decide which of these hypotheses we should be more convinced of, or how, I mean, is there any, is there any hope for deciding between these hypotheses? <laughs> Uh, well, it's it's very a very good question. Yes, there is a hope. Uh, we have uh, we are working at, at this very much. Uh, we have uh, the, this project. We are, I rap I'm reporting the first results from is going on, and this is our question. Uh, so we will look much more carefully to it. Uh, as usual, research is not always or nearly never, I would say, giving some kind of straight, simple questions like the, the, the or one or the other. Uh, mostly the questions are complicated and mostly they are very, uh, very ifs and uh, etc. Uh, one of the problems here is, for instance, the measurement of crime I was talking about. This is not easy business. Uh, Boo was talking about the, 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 the uh, reporting, which is one of the obstacles we have here. We have man, man, many other obstacles. But we are trying to do our best to answer this question. If you ask me now what I believe uh, in, in both uh, what the data we already have and what's looking uh, or are looking at and also for the previous research. We are not the first ones who are looking at this kind of questions. Uh, I would say this is more or less impossible that some kind of changes in the society are not related to the other changes of the society. So the, the kind of hypothesis that, that, that the, the immigration would have a, some independent effect of the crime, not related to other circumstances in the society, not affecting other people who are in the, in the country. Uh, as long I was uh, doing the, 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 sci the, the, the social sciences around 50 years, I never see anything uh, which w would l work that way. Uh, so if you ask me, uh, this is not the result of research, but the result of, of my thinking, I don't think it's possible to imagine that if we just get rid of all immigrants, so, so would crime decrease in the way it's, uh, it's sometimes believed. Uh, I can't see how it could work. I mean, the problem is that, that the if you have a society, you have the, the people who are lowest in the society. 
and these people are causing most problems to, 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 to other people in the society. And you can change this group, but you can never erase this group. I mean, if you, if you send all immigrants away, uh, who, will, who is going to do, to do the dirty job? <laughs> I mean, someone must do it. Some, must, uh, mu some, some people must clean the streets and do other kinds of things which are the, 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 uh, the, the lowest, uh, lowest level of the society. So, so my strong belief is that uh, the second hypothesis, which is uh, most probable, but I can't prove it yet. Very good. Uh, can I follow up on that? And maybe Ori would like to follow up too. So let's forget this about being immigrant or non-immigrant. But I thought it was a rather stable result in, in criminology. If you increase the number of young people, mm -hmm. you usually get an increase in crime. Definitely. Rate. Yeah. And I thought that this immigration wave we had also would increase the, the number of young people because they were, they were relative young. So there is still at least a little bit surprising that that the crime levels haven't gone up, given that we increased the number of young people. You're absolutely right, Gustav. And uh, if you look, uh, if you go back to, to the uh, Bro study, the Swedish National Council for Crime Prevention study, uh, it shows that if you if you control for for the age, you you overrepresentation be, be much lower. Uh, so, uh, what you could say here, I guess, is that. I, I would guess that the, the total effect is so low of oh. this group that this kind of things doesn't matter. Uh, I, I have some kind of idea that resilience of Swedish society to this kind of changes, it's so high that small, small differences wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, affect this. We had, in the matter of fact, variable the, the average age of people in municipalities, so we have some possibilities to look at it. Uh, we come back to this. Uh, but uh, at the moment, I can't give a more sophisticated answer than, than you are, uh, th th than that. Uh, we, we have to com come back to age. Yeah, so, so there might be a too small effect, but, but wouldn't you be able to investigate it by looking at uh, when the age com composition has changed in other areas, in other parts of the world? I mean, what, what kind of effect you should have? One of our expect. studies, sorry, uh, one of our studies is going to look at the uh, comparison between Sweden and other countries. Uh, particularly, I mean, this is uh, this question, what happened in Sweden compared to what happened in Germany uh, with, with the same number of uh, immigrants and, and with, with Finland and Norway uh, without uh, very much immigration. Uh, so we could add the age variables to, 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 to this. Thank you. Uh, Malcolm, uh, you, you're going to get a microphone here. Um, thanks. So what I got from your talk is that uh, it may be the case that if we aggregate across individuals, there's this one pattern, but the association is due to the fact that these immigrants are living in socioeconomic circumstances that make them more likely. But you said something very interesting a, a, a moment ago, which is you said, oh, well, if we look at the stratification of society, um, you know, people at the bottom, uh, you know, cause these problems. And so, I in a sense, you, you've, given, you've given us a sort of uh, class analysis of, of crime. But you could look at it the opposite way. You could say, well, these people at the bottom of society are not the ones causing the problems. It's the people at the top who are putting the people in the bottom of society in difficult circumstances, which means they're trying to survive by, you know, breaking into cars and taking things of value so they can give their children some food, or, you know, whatever. I'm being a bit extreme. But let me put my Karl Marx hat on and say, <laughs> let's imagine that you actually did conduct an, this analysis and you found that... Um, you know, immigrants actually, you know, in every sense are conducting more, you know, are committing more crimes. Mm -hmm. What would that mean? Be because maybe what we could conclude from that is not that immigrants are somehow bad, but that they're extremely persecuted. Mm. So I, I wonder, you know, is there a little bit of a risk of saying, well, I'm going to show you that immigrants aren't actually committing these crimes, and therefore it's okay. But 
you know, what if they did? I don't know that it would actually be proving, in a sense, the point that a lot of people would like to prove with these data that immigrants are bad. Do you see what I mean? I see what you mean. And uh, uh, spending the uh, last 50 years in criminology, uh, I had this discussion before. Uh, what I, I did here is a kind of shortcut. I skip all this. I could do it, I could discuss this, and when, when we are teaching our students, when we our seminars, we are having, of course, this perspective too. Of course, of course, uh, at the same time, I mean, the same way that, uh, that uh, immigrants uh, can't be unrelated to, to other things in the society, in the same way, uh, of course, uh, um, criminality among the poor people are not only <laughs> related to the poor people. It's related to the structure of the society, and this is not the slump that they are. That they are. Uh, so so I, I generally agree with your statement, but this is something I kind of uh, I'm going to, to discuss another time. I mean, we, have a, we, we need a new seminar. In, in, the, in the question of if it show that immigrants are causing much more crime in Sweden, if this is reason to stop immigration, well, this is a very important discussion. Where, I mean solidarity, I mean uh, humanity, all, all these questions are not discussed here. Uh, I don't need to do it because I was looking at the very pure data related uh, is, is immigration increasing or not increasing uh, uh, crime levels. Uh, politicians, other people must discuss this question. As, uh, uh, I, to, to, to say that I am, uh, agree with you, I would, would say this discussion is for some reasons very much not there at the moment in Swedish discourse. Maybe I can just take it. I think it's a follow-up. I mean, to this discussion, how do you account for? Oh, you took it away. How do you account for the fact that uh, even among the most disadvantaged, uh, the vast majority of people do not commit crime? Given well, this kind of explanatory framework you're now discussing. Well, this is this is a pretty obvious uh, general problem with social sciences, <laughs> in opposition to Newton who looks at his apples <laughs> and all fall in the same way. You can't do individual predictions in social sciences. Forget it. And I believe it's pretty nice to be person in the society where you can't be predicted. Even in Chinese are trying and so on. So, uh, what you can do is to make a prediction of group level, not at the individual level, never at the individual level, but the group level. And, uh, and we, using, we are using traditional statistics and s seeing that risks are much higher in some groups than the others. And this is our way of explaining things. We, we can't explain individual behavior. Uh, because the, 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 the human life is so diverse. I mean, in some of these areas, there is maybe the old grandmother who is wonderful and taking ca care of the kids and l showing the possibilities and, and doing quite a lot of things. And other, uh, we have an extremely intelligent kid who, who is extremely successful in school and not liking to, 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 to uh, socialize with the, with the criminals. They are million of individual explanations. This is not the social science. Social science is looking at the general. And generally what we've seen is that in this group you are looking at, they are substantial over risks. And this is what we are talking ab talk about. Never, never predicting indivi individuals. We have a follow, uh, follow up on this from Christer. Hello, thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, I don't think we need to go to the individual though, because you have subgroups, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at the latest Bureau report, 
they point out that it's a very small group that are doing a lot of crime, right? Yeah. So that's interesting, right? To look at that group of deprived people and look at why is this small group doing so many more crimes than this, the other group? They're still at the group level, but not individual, right? This is a good point. Yeah. Or this is one. Uh, this is one of the the, the most common criminology criminological knowledge. Crime is very unvenienly, uh, uh, very very. Uh, it's 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 not. Unevenly distributed. Unevenly, thank you. Distributed. So, uh, eighty percent of all crimes, reported crimes, are committed by five pe five percent percent of people. Uh, Nearly the same if you look at the areas. I mean, I mean, uh, most of crimes are, are concentrated to very few hotspots. And uh, even if you look at the vi victims, few people are uh, exposed to, to a lot of crimes and most of people are not exposed to very much crime, many crimes. So this is, this is something which is one of the most interesting aspects of criminology because it's giving us also a possibility for prevention. I mean, we know how, where to concentrate. And, and if you compare these very particular groups with the rest of the population, you will find substantial differences. One of these differences is uh, that they, 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 they are disadvantaged. Another is that they have lower EQ. An additional one is that they have very bad parental uh, or, or bad parental circumstances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And still, if you did all this, and there are a lot of these variables who are dividing, and look at your, your final population, you still will find people who are committing crimes and who are not committing crimes. Uh, let me, I mean, we are uh, approaching the end. Let me uh, tell you the story. I was talking to the old psychiatri psychiatrician. Uh, who are the responsible for one of the psychiatric clinics in our country with the very, very dangerous people. Uh, locked for life, extremely dangerous. The guy told me once, you know, I could let out half of my patients tomorrow without at any that anything happens. <laughs> well, why don't you do that? I said. Well, because I don't know which half. Yes, I uh, don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can both hear you and see you. So go ahead. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you also, Jersey. Um, so I'm particularly interested in gun-enabled and gun-related crimes. And at the end of your presentation, you made reference to the shootings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering what your plans are in terms of taking forward research on both uh, gun-enabled crimes and unrelated crimes. So the sort of why question of, of why um, we see this increase, but also the sort of how question linked to availability of firearms and how these issues might play into the question of patterns of migration. Um, does the data that you have help you answer these questions or do we need different data or how do you see this going forward in your work? Uh, Thank you for your question. Uh, Gustav, is it OK? Uh, I, I'm, all right, I'm on. Um, well, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the homicides, uh, as you see, was a part of our study. If you look at gun-related co related homicides, which is around 40, some more 40 cases a year in Sweden, we can't do the, 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 the can't use the same uh, the same kind of data already uh, in relation to the, the the mortal violence in general. We can look at the municipalities because uh, there, will there will be no crime there for 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 hundred or more than hundred years for the most of them. Uh, so uh, so you have to use another kind of methodology to look at this kind of questions. And uh, this is not particularly the, the, the part of the study we are doing. Uh, the reason I mention it in the end of my presentation is that we have something here to explain 
or not so much at theoretical, so, uh, not so much at the empirical, so as theoretical level. Uh, I mean, claiming <coughs> that it's it's b uh, the, the situation is improving in the situation where we have you have a substantial increase of deadly violence uh, by guns. It's it's not the sma statement you can do without explaining. So that's why I took up, uh, took it up, and 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 uh, we need uh, kind of uh, have a much more understanding what's going on in this very particular, very special, and let me add, very unusual environments where this kind of subculture is uh, flourishing. Uh, so. Uh, uh, people are doing quite a lot of research, uh, that kind of a lot of research of uh, on that. Uh, uh, I'm not involved in this research at the moment, even if I have to immediately admit that at, uh, if you look at the political discourse, discourse here in Sweden, this is one of the most important questions we have. So we must look much more into it. But I, I'm not sure it's possible in the framework of this study. Okay, so now we are getting a bit shorter on time, so I will move on because now suddenly there is lining up a lot of questions. So uh, let's be a bit quicker on the questions and possibly answer. Kevin. I'd like to hear your take on uh, a, a, a notion that I've seen in, in uh, among people that are, are critical of, of uh, the claims that, that you presented. And the idea is that uh, uh, when you get a, a large influx of, of people that have, on average, a lower educational uh, or lower education than than in, in Sweden, and we also know that, uh, uh, for example, uh, high school in in Syria and high school uh, in Iraq is not as good and as in most not that most good, <laughs> not that good. Uh, so even if you have a high school degree from Syria, it's 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 really equivalent. Uh, and and but uh, th that the problem is that uh, you create poverty, uh, not not because these people are taking the low status jobs. Of course, that's also happening. But a lot of these people are becoming unemployed and long term unemployed, mm. and uh, and this is a huge problem in in Sweden, especially since the pandemic. That that, that there, are, I, I think I saw numbers that uh, sixty percent of the long term unemployed. Uh, are uh, foreign born uh, so so I'd like to hear your take on on that so to speak um, mechanism for by which uh, a, a large influx of immigration from low education countries or where the country <laughs> where the level of education is on average low mm -hmm. uh, ca can can lead to pockets of pro poverty and and in turn uh, crime mm -hmm. well uh, of course uh, complicated question. Uh, to start with, uh, obviously, uh, society is not yel helpless uh, in this question, which this graph is showing. For some reasons, people who came here in 1997, uh, they were unemployed in a very high degree, very long time. Meantime, people who are coming now, now or came recently, are still uh, have a higher unemployment than the natives, but obviously half of what happened before. So, so I think that the part of explanation here is a very high degree of passivity from the societies to emigrate to integrate people. I believe that the the, the numbers which are much uh, which decreased the, the last twenty years can be even more decreased uh, if the, the integration policies is, uh, policy is, more, uh, is more active. Then, of course, I mean, uh, people who are un 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 uneducated, people who don't have, uh, do don't know language, people who are uh, traumatized by the, by the wars, you name it, they, these people will have uh, problems to the start with. <laughs> but but degree of problems is very much related to how we handle the question of integration. Uh, my point here, I mean, uh, I, I'm not taking statements who, if and how many immigrants 
immigrants Sweden Sweden should take in the future this is this is not not what I'm doing here I'm looking at the facts and according to the facts the situation has improved and and uh, there are all, re all reason to believe that it's it's possible with future improvement and that uh, the, the, this influx is obviously anyhow in short terms is not causing increase in crime. The other problems have other people solved. <laughs> Okay, so then uh, Patrick. <laughs> no, you can go for it. But make it short. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> Let's see here. Yes. So uh, I'm a biologist, so I'm very interested in uh, the behavioral genetics of criminology. And there are some studies that have come out. Uh, there is one from Finland, for example, that shows there is a large genetic component in who gets to be a criminal and who isn't. And this is, uh, um, it runs in families, so to speak. And this can have to do with any number of things, such as mental health issues or mm. whatever. But it's not something I've seen you uh, discuss here. Is that something you plan to, since it's such a big part uh, in, there is this Finnish study, it's 650,000 people they study, and the genetic component drowned out all the socioeconomic variables and everything. So it seems to be a pretty big uh, question not to include in, in a study like this. Can you well, Patrick, good question. I, uh, one of the, the answers I could give you is to why don't read my introduction to criminology, <laughs> volume one chapter on the genetics. <laughs> this is not the subject of this study. I'm a sociologist in the beginning, which means that I'm, I'm not uh, that much um, doing research on the genetics. But let, let, me, let me instead give you the general statement. People who believe that all, uh, all behavior is dependent only on social variables are stupid. About the same as people who believe that all behavior are caused by the genetics. <laughs> because of course, I mean, we are bi biological beings and we are social beings. Uh, when I'm trying to explain it to, to my students, I'm saying something like that, you know, most of all people at the world, in the world are able to speak. This is pre-programmed. Sometime in one, when they are one year, they start to speak. And when they three years, you can't stop them. This is kind of what happens to all kids. Biology. But if they speak Mandarin or Swedish, it's not biology. It's very obvious social influence. So, and there are enormous number of studies showing in relation to the crime that the very much of it is interaction between biology and environment. I mean, maybe most famous of these studies is Caspi um, Muffet. Uh, science 2002, if I remember, when they, they were looking at the, at the, the, this, uh, the, the, the activity in serotonin system, uh, serotonin uh, in relation to the, to the, 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 uh, the, the, the beaten children, and showed that uh, if you have a low active serotonin system and you have the same time being beaten by your parents, the probability of uh, violent crime will be much higher. Both are risk factors. In the interaction, they are causing catastrophes. So, so the, <laughs> but I guess biology and, uh, and emigration has pretty little to do with each other. On 
that point, unfortunately, we are we've been running over time, so we're running out of time. So let uh, join me and thank Jersey for this great talk and interesting discussion. Great pleasure to be invited. Great to have you. And, and I'm very sorry I couldn't answer all the fundamental questions. Give me some more time. <laughs>